Hey folks, Cornell with YouTube Fish and Vids, out here on an absolutely perfect early spring day at the Mid-Atlantic. I'm out here on a tranquil, very quiet mountain lake up here in Maryland, and I think there's barely a soul on the lake, maybe two guys fishing, so I have the whole place almost to myself to do what is the maiden voyage on the Old Town Sportsman Autopilot 120. Sitting here on my Harbor Freight folding trailer that normally holds that Pelican Bass Raider 10E of mine, but I left it at home so I can get out here on this new kayak of mine and what a kayak it is. This is the 2020 iCast Best of Show Kayak, and uh, I'm very lucky to have it. Thank you to Old Town for supplying me with this boat so I can give you guys an honest review, give you an overview, and tell you what I think about this rig. Because truly, this is gonna be one big, big change for me. I have never had a kayak. If I'm gonna get in a kayak, I might as well do it right, right? And that's what I've got here. So I'm gonna give you a front to back overview of the boat. I'm gonna get out on the water because the Mid-Atlantic's been crazy as it always is every winter. We get hots and colds and cools and warms. And this past one's been pretty tough with iced over waters, with some snow. And with this pandemic, my work has been pretty crazy. I'm fortunate enough to be working and I'm fortunate enough to be busy. So. Thank you for your patience on me getting out here and uh, showing off some fishing videos because I'm missing it just as much as you're missing it, I'm sure. So let's go ahead and do a quick overview so I can get on the water and try to catch my first bass of 2021. It's a little late, so it's time to get at it. All right, first and foremost, let's just take a look at this beautiful boat. This is the Ember Camo Orange. That's my color of choice. That's the one I decided to go with. Since I'm starting right here in the bow of the boat, I'm gonna show you guys something interesting. I don't think you've ever had anybody talk about this when it comes to a boat overview, but I was watching this guy on YouTube that had a video about registration stickers. He was actually sick and tired of seeing all of these boats down in Florida. He was from Florida and he couldn't stand seeing these beautiful boats with crooked registration stickers. So he did a video on how you can go to a local Sinorama kind of shop and have them make up registration stickers that are perfectly level, perfectly spaced. And in this case, I took his advice and decided to go to my local Sinorama in Germantown and saw Jack. I said, Jack, I need some registration stickers so I don't have to spend all kinds of time trying to level them out, evenly space them, and you got any colors that'll match this beautiful boat of mine? Showed him the color, and man, did he have this matte orange that just looks absolutely awesome. And look at this, guys. Look how perfectly straight and even and perfectly custom matched those colors are. Time is money, folks, and I'm telling you, these aren't very expensive to buy individually. I saw them at like Home Depot for like, Home Depot for like 86 cents a piece. But when it comes down to it, I put a couple bucks into this so I can have the ease of sticking them on there, making them look good. And uh, gosh, time is money. And when it comes to how much time it would have taken me to, on both sides, stick all those stickers and numbers on there, I just had a game changing time saver on my hands. It was absolutely awesome. So there's my registration stickers on this beautiful, awesome boat of mine. Thanks to Jack at Germantown Sinorama. So if you local guys decide you want to do something like that, I strongly recommend going and seeing them. And, uh, take the burden off of trying to make that happen. So check it out, guys. There's the old town Sportsman Autopilot 120. What I'm gonna do is grab this cheat sheet because this cheat sheet came with the beautifully packaged boat. And I could go over the specs with you real easy by just reading this to you. Autopilot 120, there's a 136, but this is the 12 footer. So I got the 12 foot model 120. That's got a width of 37 inches and look how wide it is. Guys, I'm telling you right now, that's wider than my Pelican. I stood in it, I measured it, it's wider than the Pelican. I've got an EVA cushioned deck and I got scupper holes in there now because I actually know that I'm gonna get some splash in the water up on my feet and I'm not gonna deal with that because that's not something I wanna deal with. And it's a little cold out here, so you can put scupper holes in there, keep the water from splashing up on your feet, and that's what I'm gonna do here. Certainly you can pop them out if you're getting some rough water and, and you get some water in your boat, you can pop them out and let it drain. But that's what's going on there. I've got all these rails to mount what is gonna be my Hummingbird Helix 7 that's on its way, and they're tough to come by too. So I've got one on the way, but that's what I'm gonna hook up there with what is a through-hole wiring kit. Basically, everything about this is all set up. You can get your transducer on the bottom and bring it up through all these existing holes so you don't have to drill a bunch of holes in your kayak because it's all pre-rigged, ready to go for all your electronics. So that's what makes this thing also that much more special. But this is the uh, piece de resistance. This is it, guys. This is the Minn Kota, the iPilot, the GPS-enabled with spot lock technology, 45-pound thrust, guys. This is the 45-pound thrust GPS enabled saltwater ready Minn Kota motor, that spot lock technology is gonna be absolutely incredible. And I know it's gonna be great because the way I like to fish and sit in place and get on top of weed lines and play the drop shot game and all the things I like to do, it's not just drop shot, just being able to sit still 
and a kayak. And you know, these things blow around like crazy, and one of the, which is one of the main reasons I never wanted to get myself a kayak. It was bad enough having the Pelican that blew around as much as it is, but it was real wide and it didn't blow nearly as much as a thin, light a little kayak, but this one's not that light. This is actually a pretty heavy boat. You'll see a lot of reviews about that because this boat weight is going to be 128 pounds hull weight assembled the motor itself is 24 pounds so do the math on that and that's how much weight you're dealing with which is why i'm happy to have this trailer to deal with because if you guys are uh, trying to move this in and out of a vehicle or on top of a vehicle be ready it's a heavy one but that's also what gives it it gives it its incredible stability that wide deck and that's what really makes it worth the effort total boat capacity is 558 pounds and its usable capacity is 406 so again the remote controlled min coda spot lock technology that right there i think i've got it right in here did i put it in where it's supposed to be yep little dry lock storage unit right there and there it is that's the ipilot bluetooth enabled remote that's going to be able to give me that spot lock that little anchor button the north button guys this has a north button which is a heading feature so it keeps you tracking in varying conditions so if you're heading to a spot and you want hands free and you want to run around and rig your rigs and tie your knots and do everything you want point that boat in the direction hit the north button that gps enabled Minn Kota is going to keep you tracking in that exact direction you're not going to blow around everywhere it's one thing to have spot lock it's another thing to have a north tracking you know option right there where you can just keep running straight got your foot pedals for your rudder you've got a rudder here in the back that's deployed easily with a little handle on the left side of the boat so over here is where your rudder is going to go and you just lift that handle and down goes your rudder for all that straight tracking that you need you can control the boat with the rudder and the pedals and keep your trolling motor straight you can do both you can turn the motor and do full-blown 360s in this bad boy absolutely incredible and then with that uh with that safety mechanism you got just like on a real deal boat you got a kill switch this kill switch right here pops right out and that basically cuts the power to that motor in case you fall out god forbid and look at that they've even hooked you up with a little part for your trolling motor uh, prop right there in case you lose your prop pin you've got one spare sitting in there that's kind of convenient so that's how that goes you tie that right to your uh, life jacket and you're good to do and speaking of life jackets i got mine sitting right there on top of what is i know because i've sat on it an incredibly incredibly comfortable seat adjustable and awesome that's what we're dealing with there with the seat and underneath that seat is your battery compartment a battery compartment that holds what is in this case a lead acid i got a big one in there i got a group 29 dc lead acid battery super heavy one but in the ways of the world you've got the opportunity to get yourself those uh, lithium ions i might be getting a lithium battery to more than cut that weight in half so i can get this boat moving as fast as it possibly can and speaking of speed, I'm pretty confident this thing's going to be pushing four miles an hour, maybe a touch more, depending on the wind and the current. And uh, overall, lighting it up and getting my lithium ion, lithium, lithium ion battery, it's going to help that thing run as well as it can run. So guys, this is just a quick overview. I want to make sure you got an idea what you're dealing with in case you haven't seen the boat, didn't hear about the boat. I got a link in the description below that takes you to... Uh, old town and you can look at the whole sportsman line of what is powered Minn Kota versions but the whole old town sportsman lineup from paddle pedal to power you've got all kinds of great options with them to check out so if you've never had an old town if you're thinking about getting one hit up that link and check out the whole lineup and hold on to your hats guys because these bad boys are tough to get i had a three month waiting period for mine i just had a guy hit me up and tell me on instagram unfortunately that he had his come in and unfortunately the delivery company damaged it and he's out another six months before you can get it that's how popular they are so let's get fishing folks i gotta get this thing out of the water it's absolutely beautiful the clouds are out the breeze is up and prayerfully i'll get my first bass of 2021 so here we go the first shove off this is as easy as this got myself a little rope on it and amazingly they actually broke the dock off they have it up there on the parking lot i guess they don't want people messing around on the dock when it's cold like this early in the spring so i'm gonna have to deal with just lowering this gently off the trailer and with that said it's gonna gently slide off and i'm gonna bring it back to me here on the shoreline but there it is she's wet <laughs> all right let's get this beauty over here gently pulled up on this here ramp so i can get back at it after we park this here vehicle and then we'll lower that beautiful Minn Kota and get fishing.
Okay, we are in the water, ready to start the maiden voyage, and there we are. Guys, I think earlier I said that my I had scupper holes. I was pointing out what I was trying to say is scupper plugs. I've got plugs in my scupper holes because it's dead placid calm out here. Look how beautiful this mountain lake is. It's so, so calm out here. I'm not going to get my, I'm not going to get any water up in here. It's not going to rain. So I put the plugs in there so I don't get a little bit of splashing up in here and getting my feet wet when I don't have to. I got my rudder down so my feet are ready to move left and right. And I got that trolling motor down and ready to go. And it's starting to blow. So let's get this thing going fast. I've lowered it down. It's in the water and I'm going to go and hit this thing and get her moving. So before I get into some shallow water and here we go, level three, the blades are turning and off we go. Guys, it, it lowered so easy. I'm gonna actually show you how that works. I just wanna make sure I lowered it in the water, but right now I've got it set perfectly straight. There's two little red arrows that are lining it up that shows that that trolling motor is exactly where it needs to be. And just with a simple left and right of my rudder, I'm controlling the boat, but there's a left and a right. I got the left, I got the right, and speed her on up or slow her down. Let's get this thing hustling. Let's go right into the wind. I'm going full blown. I'm going for it, guys. Here we go. We're at level 10. And man, we are moving. It even has a speedometer on here. I'm going straight into the wind and already this thing's reading 3.8 miles an hour, 3.9 miles an hour. So yeah, into the wind, almost four miles an hour. And we're, we're, putting, out, we're putting out some splashing waves. So we are cruising. And uh, let me show you how easy this is. Let me just show you exactly what we're dealing with when it comes to turning. So I'm at full speed. And if I wanted to turn it, of course, I could just left and right the rudder. And that's as easy as that to get it to control that way. But if I just kept my feet perfectly straight and don't want to mess with the rudder, I could easily just go left and right with the trolling motor. Check this out. Just that easy, guys. Just press it, press the button and you're controlling your boat left and right. At a high speed, man, that turns you. But this is fun. This is a really good time. And man, am I hustling. So let's get moving. And uh, before I get fishing and things like that, I'm gonna show you how this thing deploys real quick. So let me go ahead and cut the motor. So we're gonna slow that thing down. And if you ever wanna lift that motor up out of the water, you're getting in real shallow, there's a little cord right there. So there's your cord. There's a little notch right there where your cord goes and you basically release it. And watch this, just simple as that. Just pops right up and you're completely out of the water, just like that. You wanna make sure your blades and your positioning of your trolling motor is in the right position, so line up those red arrows, because all you have to do next is just grab that, bring it on back down, and there's a little little red spot right there that connects the electricity, basically. And all you're gonna do is lock that in place, and once you lock that down like so, you drop that cord in that little compartment, and you're again raring to go. So let's get that thing back up and running, and we're on our way. All right, guys, I am heading straight towards this point and I'm already in the north tracking mode. I have basically taken my feet off the rudder. That trolling motor has been taking me straight to this point in a straight line, regardless of the wind. It's moving left and right, making minor adjustments, and I'm not doing a darn thing. It's like I'm in cruise control. So all I got to do is hit this button right here, take it off of north, and now I can get back to controlling it turn my boat left or right with the rudders or turn that trolling motor as needed. But I think I'm gonna throw a jerk bait first right off this point. Steep drop off. Uh, I'm probably gonna break out the LG Bone Mega Bass Vision 110 plus one and that LG Bone. I already see a fish out there jumping. That's probably a trout, but there's some nice small mouth in here and hopefully, hopefully I'll find my first fish of the day. There we go, folks. We've got the Vision 110 plus one LG Bone tied on. Check this out. How cool is this deal? I actually use these little bonnets, these little hook bonnets. I just took them off the Mega Bass and I didn't even notice until now. What a perfect, perfect little spot right there for my little bonnets. Just put those three right there, pop that out of the rod holder. Now this is a big deal for me. Uh, these rod holders and the way these rods are sticking up, this is not happening. So when it comes to casting and things like that, I'm gonna have a struggle there because I'm not used to it. But look at this, first time ever standing in the, uh, in the boat and no, it is not as stable as my Pelican. There's no question, but man, for what this is, I've been in kayaks before, this is ultra stable. So this is a really, really great kayak for stability. Uh, it's gonna take a little getting used to, cause it is, like I said, just not quite what the Pelican was, cause that boat just had a lot more going on when it comes to meat, cause that was not a kayak. But here's what I'm gonna do with these rods. I'm gonna actually go back here and I'm gonna lay them down. I'm just gonna lay them down in the back. There's plenty of room back there because it's a big old 12 footer. So I'm gonna lay them down in the back. I'm not gonna have anything to deal with because that's what I loved about the Pelican. I had those gunnels to lie my boat, my rods down in and I had plenty of space for them. I had, gosh, up to eight rods that I'd lie on the sides of each of those four on four. About eight, eight at the max is what I used to do, but this isn't too big a deal. I just set it up like so and I got nothing in my way of casting, so. Here we go, folks. We've got a really beautiful rocky point right here. The wind's barely blowing, so it's not like I need to use that uh, 
that spot lock technology yet, but I guarantee you I'm going to here in a minute. Once I get over to that point right there and start casting away, I'm sure I'm gonna find myself in a position to use it. So here's the deal. Even while standing, I'm gonna go ahead and do it, guys. I'm gonna go and make sure I've heard that this is a real challenge. If I have that at level 10, like I was on the way over here, and I kick it in, I will fall out of this boat. I ain't gonna do that. So let's get that thing all the way down to maybe even level three, two and a half, goes in half, half power increments, hit that trolling motor, and gently and slowly away I go. I'll crank it up just enough to get me moving. And this is where I won't have to deal with the actual rudder. I'm sorry, yeah, I won't have to deal with the rudder of those little pedals because I could just turn the boat like so. Just slowly but surely turn it as I get in position. And what I'm gonna do is put myself right about here right on the end of this point. And here we go, folks, anchor time. First time ever, I pilot spot lock. Bang, enabled, there it goes. Kicking me into low gear, we're ready to roll. All right, here we go. First cast ever out of the new kayak, and it's a long one. Let's get it out there, crank it down. And it's probably, like I said, high 40s, maybe maybe even low 50s up here. We've had some warm days, but very cold nights, and this water's super clear. But let's see if we can find some small mouth, some large mouth off this point. With a little jerk, jerk pause of this here Mega Bass Vision 110 plus one. On top of it being just really, really quiet up here this time of year, and when it comes to boat traffic and things early in the season, there's just not a lot of people up here camping or out on the beaches, it's real quiet. The fishing's great, the bass fishing's great, but if the bass aren't biting, man, I've already seen trout popping around here and there, and I've got my little cast master with me. I got my itty bitty little spoon I can throw to these little popping trout, and I'm sure there's a chance I can catch a few of those if the, if the bass aren't cooperating. So, we're gonna go out for a little while, see if we can catch our first bass. If that gets tough, we have all kinds of other opportunities. And boy, panfish, giant panfish in a huge crappie and bluegill, giant shell crackers, who knows what else bites out of this lake. I've caught them all, so let's just hope it's one of those days. If not, it doesn't matter, because I'm fishing. And she's on her own. She's just keeping me exactly where I need to be. I mean, not an inch. I have not moved an inch from where I positioned myself. So I'm just fan casting this entire point in every angle I can trying to catch my first fish just absolutely incredible if i was in my pelican i would have my hand on that endura max variable speed trolling motor non-stop i'd have it in a low setting pointed into the wind i'd be trying to stay still but inevitably i'd be moving everywhere and uh, i'm not doing that right now so all i can do is focus on fishing and hands on my rods and i can only imagine how much time and how many more casts and how much more concentration that's going to allow it's just going to up the game it's going to full blown make the fishing experience that much better and that much more productive. Mm, is that a fish, guys? Oh my gosh, it feels like a good one. First fish, first spot, first hookup. Oh my gosh, it feels like a nice one too. It feels like a really nice fish, largey, smally. I don't care what it is, but it looks like a, oh my gosh, I don't have a net, guys, and this looks like a really nice fish. First fish out of my new kayak, and let's see what it is. It's a great big, it's a great big largemouth. Not a great, great big one, but he's hooked really well. Uh, without a net, let's see how I can do. He's not going anywhere. Look at this. Look at this, guys. First fish out of the Old Town Sportsman 120, and it's a beauty on a jerkbait. Look at the bellies. Are they not pre-spawn or what? Too cool, and that was the bait of choice. Oh, and he's freezing cold. And he's got the red lips. Guys, no skunk today. First bass of 2021. It's a beauty, and again, First one out of my new kayak. Ain't that something? Let's go get some more. So this Vision 110 plus one and that LG bone, the reason I'm throwing it, because the water's clear, it's got slight translucence, but it's got a solid matte chartreuse belly. And with this cloud cover and a little bit of a breeze, and this clear water, it is a perfect color. And obviously it worked. Uh, small mouth, love it. Large mouth, it's just a really great all around color. And uh, it did the job. And what I have it on in my setup here, you've seen it before if you've watched my videos, this is the Jerkbait Special by Luz. That's a six foot seven, medium power, moderate fast action. And I got it all paired up with a, uh, with a Pro-G Luz reel, medium speed reel with 12 pound test Seaguar Invisex fluorocarbon. And it's obviously getting it down to the depth where that one wanted it. Let's just hope we can find some more. I'm not giving this Mega Bass mega long pauses. I'm actually just two to five seconds maybe at the most. And it's on that pause that they usually grab it. But this water temperature is not calling for super long pauses. You know, mid to high 40s, pushing 50. 
a couple seconds at a time pretty much is it but as you've always heard and if you've ever watched jerk bait videos and people telling you how to fish these things that just you know see what the fish want mix it up a little bit but don't go too crazy with long long pauses this time of year the fish are getting pretty aggressive and they're feeding up so give them a little action on that bait and they'll hopefully jump right on it and you'll land a few i definitely like to stand in fish especially when i'm throwing a jerk bait and especially when i'm trying to fan cast so again i'm standing and i'm comfortable and i'm stable you know, depending how sure-footed you are, you know, I, you know, this is a challenge for some people. There's no doubt that this has got some movement to it. So if you're a bigger guy, I'm about, yeah, I'm a buck 90 right now at my, at my short self. So I'm pretty heavy for my height. So I got a low center of gravity. If you're a tall, big guy, this might be a little bit tipsy for you. You might be more comfortable sitting down and fishing. But for me, I'm doing pretty darn well. And I love to stand and fish. Again, a kayak is new to me and it takes a little bit of getting used to, but I'm getting used to it quick. I've only been out here. 20 minutes and that's about it all right guys time to make the first move i've unlocked spot lock and now i'm hustling to the far side i'm going to get to about the spot where my cast would land so i've got fresh water up here and hopefully i'll find another aggressive fish that's willing to take my bait so i'm going to go ahead and position myself right about here and i'm going to hit that spot lock bang i see trout out yonder popping on the surface so I've already got myself a mark on some trout if I feel like I want to throw that little cast master because they're popping over there. I've seen them nonstop. If I get over there, I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to see if I can get myself a trout in this boat. I hope I have a stringer. I'm not sure if I do or not. I got to look and I should have brought one, but I was so excited about getting out here on this new rig. That I'm, I was bound to forget something, but we'll see. If I don't have a stringer, that's okay. We'll just have a little fun with them. All right, one fish off that point. I'm not going to spend a ton of time in any given spot, but I'm heading to the next one. I got another point over here. Wind's coming and going, so it's pretty calm right now. So depending on how this wind plays out, I may mix it up. But again, I really like this jerk bait this time of year. If they keep biting it, I'm going to keep fishing it. But let's get to this next point and see what happens. What I've found, and I've done it a couple times, if I'm cruising even at only five and a half right now and I'm moving pretty quick, hit the stop button, you're still moving forward quite a bit. You got a little bit of momentum. So if you want to hit that spot lock, you hit that spot lock while you're moving, it's going to kick you in reverse pretty hard and it might lift that trolling motor up off its connection point. Last time I did, I heard a little beep and I realized what was happening. So we're pretty calm, cool and collected right now. So I'm going to hit an auto pilot spot lock. It's going to spin around. It's going to start doing its thing it's going to kick it there it goes that worked a little bit yeah that's that's what it was going on it was just moving too quick and it kicked into reverse and it popped that motor up just a little bit disengaged but that time it just literally hit it, the brakes and i'm right here off this point ready to hopefully pop another one so let's put this little remote down since i don't need it while i fish and we're going to get at it all right making a move just moving inside the point into the pocket you know this time of year you know looking for secondary points and you know, moving up these creeks in some cases is a ticket, but I'm not going to go very far. I'm not going to go very far back in here. I just happen to see some wood falling here in the water and I'm going to hit the brakes. I'm going to fish right over top of this uh, fallen tree right here in the deeper water. See if there's something suspended in the tree that wants to come up and eat. So again, bang, spot lock. Let's see what we can do. I pulled off hitting the tree. So let's see if we can get over there and get it out. This is a really great thing. When you get snagged up like this, I'm going to only imagine kicking this thing in. I'm going to go get myself right in position on the opposite side of where I got hung up and then hit that spot lock. And of course, you know what that's going to do. It's going to give me an opportunity to easily retrieve my bait. If it's a, if it's a situation where you're actually using your lure retriever and going that route, talk about in the wind in a kayak or a little pelican type of boat. If you had the opportunity of a spot lock, tell me how easy it would be to Get your bait back, I can see it right there, spot lock. All right, let's sit it right here for a second. Let's turn this thing around. Let's give it a couple, there it goes, just like that. Come to the other side, and sure enough, that's what I got snagged on. I got snagged on somebody's, most likely a trout, where I got a little bit of line, and I got myself a split shot. Fortunately, I got my bait back, because that's an expensive one. So let's go ahead and get this all off and get back to fishing, as my spot lock does its thing. Only time will tell how much time I get out of this battery here. This lead acid, big group 29 DC marine battery, that holds a lot of juice and uh, this 45 pound thrust trolling motor with very little drag with this really streamlined boat, even though it's got some weight to it, 
you know, I've heard nothing but good things about these things holding up when it comes to time on the water. Eight, 10 hours at times, depending on what you're dealing with. Lithium ion just holding power that much better. So I know battery life is a big, you know, question out there in the world, but it's just all depends, guys. Wind, current, all the, the amount of use, you know, how much you're running and gun, how much you're traveling at full speed. That's all going to vary quite a bit. So I'll keep you guys abreast of the situation as I fish this thing over the course of the next weeks, months, and years, most likely. And we'll see what these trolling motors uh, take from these batteries. And we'll, of course, be keeping you informed as to what happens when it comes to my upgrades and if the lithium-ion thing ever happens. So let's get to the next spot. Let's, uh, let's work this battery out and see how far we can go. All right, I don't know if you guys are noticing this, but look how easy it is to move these pedals. I basically just move those pedals all the way to the front. You know, when I'm moving from spot to spot, I have a very, very strong feeling that I'm going to be using that remote to work this trolling motor. I'm not going to need the rudder. So it's so easy to pull them back into position if I need them, but that just gives me that much more room to not have these little handles bumping into my feet. So I got the full width of this deck working for me. So I just made that move. That's the first thing I've done that's a little bit different. So as the hours pass, I'm gonna learn a lot about this boat and all the things that I need to do to make myself comfortable. So yeah, I'm not kicking those little orange handles of those pedals anymore. All right, folks, I may have mentioned that there are trout in this lake earlier, and there are, and I've got some really good, oh my gosh, right here, I got golden rainbow trout all over me. They're all over the place. Let's just see what happens. I mean, the, oh, there's rainbow trout everywhere. Oh my gosh, they're all over me. Oh gosh, let me stand up because this is the way this is going to happen. I really hope I have a stringer because I just found the mother load and I just had one chasing this down so fast. It wasn't one of the golden ones. It was just a standard, but there's a ton of them. Oh, they're chasing like crazy. There's a rainbow. There's a golden, gold, 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 gold. Come on, chase it down. This is going to be really, really fun, guys. There are so many, so many trout right here. Unreal. I was cruising by. I was heading my next spot. And I saw these golden just scurry. And with these golden trout, there's no regular rainbow trout that I can even see. Here's a golden chasing it. He's chasing it. He's chasing it. He's chasing it. Twitch, twitch. Come on, eat it. Oh my gosh. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Eat it. 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 Oh my gosh. They're right here in the water. Can you see him, guys? This happened, uh, I don't know if it was last spring fall. I can't remember when I was out here last and just had a heyday. Uh, it was right around the time when the pandemic uh, was shutting down all these waters with the exception of the opportunity to go fish for food. And I was out here fishing for all kinds of anything that I could put on a stringer, yellow perch and rainbow trout, and I was just loading up. It was a blast. But here I am with a little cast master in my hand again. I'm getting chased down every cast. I haven't had one nab it yet, but it's a matter of minutes before or seconds before this happens. I really hope I can put a couple in the boat because they look like they're pretty decent size too. So just a steady retrieve on this eighth ounce Castmaster six pound test. Oh, there he is, fluorocarbon. I got the first one, just like that, guys. Little rainbow trout, not one of the golden rainbow trouts, but a rainbow trout. Regardless, and he gets back in the water, quick release. And I got little golden rainbow trout swimming under the boat. I literally see him. So like I said, they're in here, guys. <laughs> I got my rainbow trout. First one hooked, not in the boat, but it's only been a matter of I don't know how long I've been, just a few casts in. So let's try and get another one. And let's see if uh, I should be reaching for a stringer right now. There he is, I got another one back to back cast. Oh, it's a bigger one too. And I have no net. <laughs> like I said, I have no net, but it ain't no big deal. They're not huge, but they're beautiful. And he's in the boat, guys. Look at that. Beautiful Maryland rainbow trout, little stock deal. And uh, let's do this. Let's uh, so carefully get back in the back of this boat and see if I'm lucky enough to have myself a stringer. And if I do, we are just in business, because I do. So let me go ahead and get this strung up. And I'm gonna bring home a few trout today. Maybe even get my limit, almost guaranteed I'll get a limit. Extremely unprepared I was for what just happened. Now, the deal is, I mean, literally, I'm still looking at them under the boat, guys. I'm, I'm on spot lock. I'm just sitting here perfectly still. Haven't moved a minute, was able to reach back and get my stringer. And I know my angle's bad right there, but here we go, guys. We're gonna tie them onto this little handle right here, right next to the seat. How convenient is that? And the quicker I can get back in the water, the quicker I can get my limit of trout. So we can have a little fish fry action night. Fish in the water on the stringer. Let's go get some more. There is a great big golden right here. Right here by the boat, man. Right here by the boat. Oh, get it. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Oh, he had it. Oh my gosh, he's a great big one too. Here he goes. Let's see. All right, so I just realized uh, 
how great and easy it is that I can put these rods down on this deck like this in front of me. Not getting in the way of the trolling motor at all. So I got the cast master here to the right, the jerk bait here to the left. And the school seems to have moved on. I saw a couple little uh, golden rainbow trout scurrying off, but I'm gonna keep on trucking to the spot where I was going. I'm still working my way down towards the dam, but these trout are all over the place. So it's gonna be a great thing if I could just throw that cast master here and there as I see these fish, but continue to work towards uh, catching a few more bass as we go. So let's get this uh, trolling motor back up and running, take it off a of spot lock and kick it into gear and away we go. All right, found my next spot to fish for some bass and the mega bass is back in the water and I got good wind blowing on this steep bank with some fallen trees. I'm almost to the dam where I'm going to fish the rocks on the dam and there's some, usually some pretty good smallmouth around that area this time of year so hopefully that's what we're going to find. Uh, I haven't seen any more trout on the way, but I know another spot where there's tons of them, hopefully. And we'll play with a couple more of those before this all ends for the day. Only got a couple more hours, and it feels like there's some moisture in the air. In fact, I feel a few raindrops coming, so I might have to get out of here sooner than later, unfortunately. But two fish in the boat on the maiden voyage, not too bad. All right, over here at the spillway, right at the dam, guys. Nothing over by the fallen trees, but now I've got some steep rock. And a little bit of current with this water getting getting pulled over the spillway so i've always done well here on some smallies and largemouth a little bit of everything around here uh, and there's even some submerged aquatic vegetation so it's a really great spot overall so let's see if anything happens i got trout guys i got trout over here too this is going to get interesting i see a little Man, I got this, I hope that thing sticks around. If there's one, there's more. But I got a little rainbow golden trout right there. And another one, oh, oh, I got a bite too. I got a fish, oh, I have one, do I have one? What's going on here? I had a fish, guys, I actually had a bite. Nope, I had some vegetation. Let's do this real quick. Let's go ahead and get this thing going. I'm gonna try and get myself a rainbow trout. Bear with me, all right, here we go. There's a bunch of them over here, guys. Let's see if this works out. Let's see, where did you guys go? I see you. Oh my gosh, gangs of them right here by the dam. All right, here we go. Let's see how this works. There's a couple more over there. Man, they're shying away so bad. It's unfortunate. I wish they would just take it every time. Oh, there he is, got him. Oh, it was a great big one. That was a great big rainbow, not a golden rainbow, but he ate it. So let's see if we can get one to get latched on. These have tiny little hooks on them, so I gotta do my best to try and hold on, but man, that second trout lost, but they're biting, so here we go. Mm, there's the right one. <laughs> that one bit it. He couldn't resist. Let's see if I can keep him. He's decent in the boat. Gosh, trout number two, guys. Not the golden trout we're looking at, but the ones that are swimming with them that are definitely more camouflaged under the water. Isn't that pretty, though? Absolutely beautiful little trout. All right, that's number two going on the stringer. You know, I'm going to do something special here, guys. This might help me get one of these chasers. I got myself a little Super Gel Pro Cure Shad Formula. I'm going to get a little, little, little tiny bit of scent on this piece of metal and see if those followers get behind that little scent trail and actually decide to latch on. I've had that happen before. A little Pro Cure goes a long way when it comes to these finicky trout. They smell something. They're definitely, hopefully, going to be more interested so let's see if that makes a difference first time i've added any today i've caught two i've had so many chasers but man if i get one behind and he smells it it's a better chance that he'll decide to eat it oh and there he is oh he ate it guys just like two casts after i added a little of that scent to it unbelievable so that might make a difference we'll find out in a second so let's keep at it let's see if the next cast produces that was cool a little bit of weather and a little tiny misty kind of rainy feeling and wind was making me nervous it's kind of gone away and it's feeling a little warmer now that wind was really brisk and that little spit of rain was making me nervous thinking i was gonna have to shut this thing down but there he is right there right in front of the boat saw him eat it another one gets off oh my god that is incredible just right after i added that pure pro cure shad scent i started getting bit that much better but they're just eating it just last second and man i gotta get these things latched on you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna loosen up my drag a little bit i'm gonna give them a little bit of more play so if i get one hooked i might have a better chance of keeping them on well this has been great having these trout chase down this little piece of metal and latching onto a couple so what we're gonna do is know they're here obviously keep this in mind for later or 
I don't know, another day. I don't, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep on trucking around this lake, guys. I want to, I want to catch a smallmouth. That's really what I want. If I don't catch one, that's okay. But uh, I got a couple on the string, and I'm sure if I continue to see trout, I'll just keep throwing this castmaster to him and eventually get a limit. But let's move on. Let's continue throwing this jerk bait up against this dam, and see if I can find myself. Uh, oh, as this last trout almost takes it. Oh, see if I can find myself a bass. All right, let's put this castmaster up and get back to doing some bass fishing. Guys, there we go. Got something by the dam. Finally, towards the end of it, too. It's a nice one. Is it my small mouth? It's my small mouth. Dude, this is too cool. Check it out. Skinny, ugly. Oh, he's struggling. Poor guy. No wonder he wanted to eat. But he's a decent one lengthwise. Guys, that's incredible. So we got trout. We got large mouth. We got small mouth on my first outing of 2021. And on the new kayak to boot. Isn't that awesome? Just a great, great deal. Again, he's struggling, but he's a smallie right down by the dam like I thought he'd be. So let's go and put him back and keep on rolling. All right, A for effort right there. Got myself a smallie, too cool. All right, let's keep it in here. Maybe there's a couple more, you never know. But as distracting as those trout are, it's kept me away from this jerk bait. Who knows how many bass I could have caught by now if I didn't have all these trout teasing me and wanting to go on my stringer, so. Let's see if we can pull off a couple more bass. Okay, as expected, folks, I found another mother load of trout and I'm in more placid, calm water. And guys, they are all over me. There are so many of them out here. I got goldens, I got regular old rainbows, and man, they are popping and they are showing themselves. And just uh, gotta play with them. Gotta see if I can catch a limit here. And uh, I'll be going back to bass fishing shortly, but I gotta play with these trout. It's too much fun to get these things hooked up. Hopefully I'll latch on and keep a couple and not lose so many. Oh, there he is. That didn't take very long. That was just a couple casts in. It feels like a little bit chunkier one too. Let's see if he stays on. Yeah, he's definitely a bigger fish. There we go. Not that much bigger, but he's, he's on. So there's number three, guys. Number three, only a couple casts in after stopping on my next spot. Let's get him strung up. And try and get another one. Mm, number two, and it's a golden. I got a good one too, guys. It's a big old golden. Look at this guy. Look how bright the colors are on this thing. Is that insane? It matches the boat. I got the golden trout, guys. Isn't that beautiful? A golden rainbow trout bred to be that way. And he's going on the stringer. And that's number four, and he's a good one. So let's get him on, and let's get number five. There he goes, <laughs> number four. That's amazing, what a sight. All right, let's get number five. There he is, there's number five, guys. I got number five. All right, he's not a huge one. It's just another standard rainbow, but that's gonna be it, guys. That's gonna be it. We're gonna call it on the trout. We got to, look at that stringer down there and that beautiful golden. So we got one more for the stringer. Five, five fish limit achieved. Got a nice little fish fry coming to me. And now I can focus on the job at hand, which is doing some bass fishing out here on this beautiful mountain lake. Thank you, rainbows. Let's string them up and let's go bass fishing. All right, I have pulled over right here on the point, right in front of the resort. And I'm looking for a sign out fish, folks. It's getting late, I'm hungry. We got some fish to put on ice. And it's been an absolutely incredible day, an incredible maiden voyage on this luxurious, unbelievably comfortable, super stable, pretty quick little kayak. So uh, yeah, I can't think of anything negative to say about it at this point. Just not quite as stable as what I'm used to, but for a kayak, unbelievably stable. So the iPilot, the spot lock, the north heading, everything I've used today has just been putting more time into my fishing and that fishing was productive. I got my first large mouth of 2021, my first small mouth of 2021, and a stringer, a five fish limit of rainbow trout, including a golden rainbow, go figure. It's been great, guys. Let's go for that sign out fish and we'll call it. All right, folks, I made it back to the boat ramp. As luck would have it, the bass didn't cooperate. I didn't get that sign out fish, but it was an absolutely great day out on the water. Got myself the first bass of the year, got myself a stringer of trout, and I can't ask for more. The boat, the maiden voyage, I'm really glad I could share it with you. It was an absolutely awesome ride, and I'm looking forward to a lot more rides on it. So as always, I appreciate you joining me. As always, appreciate you subscribing. And until we meet again, over and out.